I was deployed to, to Afghan um, in 2010, um, where it was a really busy time, you know, so we were um, a part of a battle group, the Royal Welsh Battle Group, that had to um, deploy to Nadi Ali, basically, and it was a part of an operation called Operation Mostarak, which is one of the largest aviation assaults since, um, since the, the conflict started. So yeah, it was a really busy time, and uh, and you know, but it was I was at the height of my career. I, I loved it. You know, it's what you join the military to do. You so, were out there doing your patrols, as we see on the screens. We've been watching all the stuff recently in, in light of the, the pullout from Afghanistan. You were out there doing normal routine patrol, I guess. What happened to you? Yeah, so I, I was a part of um, a reconnaissance platoon at the time, and. Um, you know, we were we'd just been re-rolled from from Operation Mosterak, um, and we were sent back to Bastion to sort of rejig the kit on the vehicles and things like that. So, um, on the nineteenth of February, um, we we got the order. We were retasked and we redeployed back out on the ground. So when we left when we left Camp Bastion that morning, um, we got about I don't know about forty kilometres outside Camp Bastion when my vehicle went over an IED. So. Um, yeah, it was a it was pretty manic at that point. Um, I didn't I didn't lose consciousness or anything like that. So I was awake through the whole thing. I suffered um, a, a large shrapnel wound to my right leg, um, quite a substantial shrapnel wound to my head. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it, it it was quite kinetic, and it was um, it was a it was a busy busy time. What followed for you? What happened? You were flown back to the UK. Yeah, so once once I got Kazi back to Camp Bastion and uh, and underwent you know sort of five to seven hour operation um, where you know my life was it was a life threatening injury at the time. So once they stabilised me, they flew me back then to um, Sally Oak in Birmingham, where I where I underwent then um, a few more operations to try and to try and save my leg, um, which they were successful at that time, which allowed me then to go to Headley Court. Uh, which was a rehab facility for the military. After sort of 18 months, I um, I was declared fit again then. That, you know, they'd managed to save my leg and, you know, I was on top of the world because it allowed me to carry on doing the job. You redeployed? Yeah, yeah, so... I still can't believe this. So back, back in 2012, I... Um, I got the opportunity to redeploy back to Afghan with my battalion, which, you know, to, to overcome an injury like mine, which is normally a career stopper, um, I'd managed to defeat that and and crack on, you know, which which at the time for me, I was I was really excited about. Um, my family wasn't particularly thrilled about it, so it was um, it was a sacrifice that I had to had to sort of say. You know, I've, I've got to make that decision, and it was a bit of an awkward time because um, my my second son was born three weeks before I deployed, so um, you know tensions were a bit high. And but you know, I was adamant that I'm I'm going again, so nothing really got in my way and stopped me. Did that go or plan any issues during that deployment? Yeah, so um, after about five and a half months being deployed, um, I had to be Kazi back back to the UK again um, because the surgery that I had done prior to me deploying had all come undone basically. So all the um, artery stents that I had put in and all the damage, the nerve repairs I had done basically undid and I ended up having to fly back to the UK and have more surgery. So what did the surgeon say when he saw you? I, I, I'm waiting for this because I imagine he sorted you out the first time round. You deploy it without him knowing you've redeployed, come back and he's seen you again and he's wondering why are you back here? Yeah, so he, he he basically said to me, he goes, how have you ended up in this mess? And I was like, well, I, I, I redeployed back to Afghan. And he was like, and he went mad. Yeah, there's a few choice words put in, put in there. <laughs> and um, he, he he squared me away again, you know. So he, he managed to get me um, to get me fit enough so I could walk, basically, and that was that was my goal. 
but um, as far as as far as my military career, I knew then that you know what, enough is enough, and you know it, that's when my career in the military ended. Fast forward then, and you find yourself in a position where you're, you're sat at home, relaxing, enjoying yourself, and something's going wrong with the leg. What, what happened? Yeah, so I was just sat at home watching watching a bit of telly. Um, and I had my feet up on the coffee table and then I just felt this massive pain shoot up through my through the original injury site all the way completely up into my back and you know it got it got so bad that I had to ring an ambulance because I was on my own my wife she was out shopping with the kids and I was in a really bad place and I couldn't breathe so I originally thought it was a blood clot um, that had traveled to my lung because I was struggling to breathe as well and um when they investigated in hospital, I'd found out that two nerves had basically touched each other. So, um, and from that point on then, my leg had stopped working from, from the injury site down, down to my foot. So, yeah, that, that was a bit, that was quite a scary time actually, because my leg then started dying from the foot up because it wasn't getting much blood down. And after about four months of being on my, you know, a substantial amount of, pain relief and, and everything like that I, I I spoke to my surgeon and I said I need I need to get the leg off and I've made that decision you know I've had a conversation with my family and they're they're happy for it um you know for me to make that decision so 9th of November 2016 um I've become an amputee and it hasn't stopped you you said to me something that, that you've had all of these experiences and you don't want them to be wasted and you're helping people now, aren't you? And doing fundraisers yeah. to support them. Talk about the things that you've been doing. I mean, real physical challenges. Yeah. So four, so four months after, um, after my amputation and it was a, probably I'd been walking about three or four weeks. I did a 26 mile sponsored walk, um, which was good mentally but not very good physically you know I uh, <laughs> tore up my stump a little bit but you know ever since then I've been I've been trying to strive to, to to push myself all the time you know to 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 take myself out of that comfort zone and you know really get back down to my roots and you, you know pro it, it's probably a part of me that when I joined the army it, it just goes back to then so you know I'm a firm believer in in saying like out of all my life experiences and the things that I've been through, knowledge, you, you know, knowledge is no good unless I pass it on. So for people to see me cracking on and see me, you know, doing these kind of things and raising money for, for really worthy charities and things like that, then it just gives people a different perspective, you know, because I, I find myself like being a role model to my children, being a role model for people that have got disabilities, you know, and people that haven't got disabilities, you know, they're, they're like, oh, this is this is amazing. I'm going to go out and do something, you know. So, you know, if, if, if people are doing that uh, on the back of me doing something, then then I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a happy person. And you've got a real poignant challenge coming up, you know, the end of the Afghan involvement for the British and, and the US and you're paying tribute to your comrades who fell during the conflict. Yeah. So uh, I call it the 400 for 457, which is, what that means is, is basically um, I'm going to do 457 laps of a 400 meter running track, um, which equates to 113 miles or for people that are in uh, kilometers, it's 182 kilometers. <laughs> but the, the idea behind that is we, we lost 457 service personnel in Afghan over the last 20 years. And you know, I, I'm not one of these people that 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 watch things unfold from from my armchair. So I I said, right, okay, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to walk a lap for for these guys. You, you know, to to be able to to show my respect and you, you, you know, so it's it's in November as well. So it's Remembrance Sunday's weekend after, and I thought, you, you know, I've got to do this. You know, because. I feel, again, I feel like a role model. I feel like people should be more aware of the things that are going on. So what better way than to, to, to show my support and to show my appreciation for their sacrifice, you know? And it's for one of my favourites as well, for Woody's Lodge. I'm, I love Sean. I love the team. I've met them many times. 
yeah you know uh, you know i'm a i'm a project manager for woody's lodge so you know the work that the work that we do and how you know we go about supporting veterans is is key the majority of our staff are veterans themselves so we've we've all been through some form of of um, life event that's that's brought us into this into this job role you know and just to see the support that the veterans are getting throughout wales is 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 massive and it's so it's humbling to see you know guys coming forward for support or just guys just wanting to come for a brew and a chat you know be around like-minded people do you think this remembrance is going to be a little different this year seeing as sort of the afghan pull out is also going to be more poignant for all those the younger generations as much as the older yeah i think definitely for the for the younger generation for the you know the guys that served in afghan you, you know it's going to be it's going to be quite vivid because of all the media that's been happening and you know all the different sort of things that have been going on it's that is definitely going to be at the forefront of their mind on you know remembrance sunday this year you know i you know i know it will be on mine because you know i lost some friends over there and it's it's that time of year where everybody remembers them anyway but you know after it all being in the media it's just going to be there you know